Model steam engines and boilers, part 21. Making and using mandrels in the lathe to allow accurate machining of important parts. And what could be more important than a steam engine flywheel? If this is not concentric, then it's not going to work very well. This video contains edited extracts showing how I generally make steam engine flywheels. This part of the video is a continuation from the last episode of Model Steam Engines and Boilers. Later on in this episode, I show an extract from my series How to Build a Model Steam Engine, which is not public, and it shows how to finish machine a flywheel for a Stuart Victoria steam engine. It's time to show the process, and this is the way I do it. First of all, you go through with the 3964 drill, as I've just mentioned, and then you use the reamer. But the secret is, run the lathe very slowly. And if you do it like this, it will fit on your crankshaft with no shake whatsoever. So once again, the rule is, drill the hole ever so slightly under the finished size. You could even bore it with a boring bar. Then run the lathe very slowly and feed in a reamer of the size that you require. I want the flywheel on this 5A to be very accurate. I hate to see wobbly flywheels and I see them all the time. So what I'm doing here is I'm machining a mandrel and again accurately machining a mandrel. This doesn't want to be a rattle fit, it doesn't want to be a tight fit, it wants to be a perfect fit in the hole in the flywheel. And to secure the flywheel to the mandrel I'm going to use some Loctite 603. I've been working on this flywheel for the last three hours, so it's time to have a quick cup of tea while the Loctite cures. And the first thing I did when I got back from the tea break was to take a very fine cut down the outer edge of the flywheel. Not much at all, just a gentle cut. And the rest of the job was just a clean up operation, different grades of sandpaper to get a good finish on the outside edge of the flywheel. The last job to do was to remove the mandrel from the centre of the flywheel. And I did that by heating up the centre of the flywheel until the bond of the Loctite gave way and I could remove the mandrel. And you can see evidence of the heat by the colour of the centre boss, but this will be painted anyway, so it's not a problem. The following edited extract is from my series How to Build a Model Steam Engine, which shows the complete construction of a Stuart Models Victoria, or at least it will do when I finish it. The front and side of this centre part of the flywheel has just been machined. And as usual, I started off with a centre drill, then I followed it through with a twist drill, and soon there will be a hole all the way through the centre of the flywheel. It's not the right size hole, but it's a hole nevertheless. This hole needs to be bored out to 7 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. Some viewers have asked if I will leave the video running in real time, so you ask for it and here it is. This is a boring bar by name and it's a boring bar by nature at the moment, it's going in there so slowly. Running the video at this normal speed will at least allow me to explain that I had to grind the boring bar to make it fit. It was too big for the hole. A 7 16 of an inch hole is very small. I'm now getting quite close to the finished size and this piece of steel I'm trying in place is the actual crankshaft that came with the kit. It's nearly there. I could actually press this on, but if I do that, the flywheel would then be permanently fixed to the shaft, and that's no good. It needs to be easily removable for assembly and disassembly. And this flywheel will be secured to the crankshaft with a single 2BA grub screw, as shown on the drawing. And here's the big question. Is this hole the correct size to fit the crankshaft? It's time to stop the lathe and see whether the crankshaft fits in the hole. Oh no, the camera's gone off, I'll never know. Sorry about that, I was just messing about. And it fits perfectly. And I knew it would, because I've done quite a lot of this, but I do recommend the practice idea. Right, so the hole in the centre is great for the crankshaft. I can now carry on with the outside edge. But because the outside edge is held in the four jaws of the chuck, I can't go all the way down, I can only go about halfway down. In this clip I've turned the flywheel round in the chuck, so it's been held by the clean metal, and I'm now turning the other half of the outer part of the flywheel. The idea being to remove as much metal as possible, because the rest of the operation will be done on a mandrel. And this is the mandrel that I'm making. I've refitted the three-jaw chuck, 
So once this piece of steel is fitted in the three-jaw chuck, I turn the mandrel to the exact size of the crankshaft. I'm using some oil to get a good finish, but I'm not getting a good finish, which means that the tool is blunt. But I'll continue to use it for the rough cuts, and here I've changed the tool tip for the fine cuts, and you can see how much better the finish is. You can't beat having a brand new tool tip on a carbide tip tool if you want the best possible finish. So after much fine cutting and a bit of sandpapering, I finally get the mandrel to precisely the size I want it to be. Not a tight fit and not a slack fit. A firm fit, just like the crankshaft. And now I'm coating it in Loctite 603. I always apply too much of this stuff. But anyway, the flywheel goes on, I rotate the flywheel to spread the Loctite 603 and then just leave it. I went into the house to make a cup of tea, brought the cup of tea back into the workshop, by which time the flywheel was fully cured to the shaft and I could continue the machining operation. The first thing to do though, as you've just seen, was I centre drilled the mandrel so I could support it with a live centre for turning these parts of the flywheel. Loctite 603 is amazing stuff. You wouldn't think that it would hold this thing so firmly so quickly. And so much so that within 10 minutes I'm turning the outside diameter of the flywheel to the right size. You can see now why I removed quite a lot of the material. I didn't want to stress out the mandrel and risk chatter. I've slowed the video down to real time and you'll see now how slow the tool is advancing across the work. And the sound that it's making is quite a healthy noise, sort of a hissing noise. If it starts squeaking, that's chattering. So, if you get chattering, how do you get away with it? Well, a couple of ways of doing it. You slow the lathe right down, as slow as it will go, and you take a very, very slow feed. And usually, this will do the trick. But sometimes, the best way to do it is to just speed up the lathe, remove the lathe tool from the proceedings altogether, and use some very coarse sandpaper to literally sand away the chatter marks. If you remember, I changed the tool tip on this tool for turning the mandrel. So I thought for the final cut across the work, I would use this tool with its very fine, newly fitted carbide tip. And then, to avoid injury, I removed the tool from the tool post and put it on the shelf. And now I'm using different grades of sandpaper. I'm starting off with 80 grit sandpaper, which is fairly coarse, and I'm going to work down the grades. This is about 300 grit, yeah, and then I go down to 600 grit, which is wet to dry sandpaper. In this clip, I've stopped the lathe and I'm cleaning up the inside edges of the flywheel because these are quite sharp. I can't do it with the lathe spinning. I'm using medium grade sandpaper to get rid of the sharp edges. I'm trying to make sure that I'm removing the sharp edges also from the square blocks that are cast into the flywheel. And now all I need to do is take the finished flywheel off the mandrel. And it's a bit of a fireworks display because there are a lot of iron filings around here. And it's a good job I've not been filing any aluminium at the same time as the cast iron because a thermite reaction would take place and that would not be good and it would make a mess of my vice. And here's the finished flywheel. And when I try it on the crankshaft, it's a very good fit. It's also accurate and it's cleaned up very well with the sandpaper by going down the grades. And to finish the job, all I need to do now is drill and tap this for the grub screw. That's it for this episode. I'd like to say stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.